What's going on guys, welcome back to Season 3 of my 23 Saskatoon Caribou Expansion Mode Series. As always guys, thank you so much for on these videos, if you wouldn't mind leaving that thumbs up as well if you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button. Also too guys, I mentioned how Season 1 of this series was trending, well Season 2 is trending as well, which is absolutely insane. I think I've only trended like once before and it was some random stream I did, I think for like the draft lottery, so absolutely nuts to see that happening. Also I want to point out here, Stanley Cup Champion, Montreal Canadiens, uh, just you know, EA I think trolling me after my Montreal series. It taking 10 years to win a Stanley Cup. But right now, guys, with the 2024 entry draft, we do not have a first round pick, but um, luckily the Sharks have it, and it's only like the eighth pick, so could be a lot worse. I know people are asking to see, you know, who they take with that pick, as well as who they took with all of our picks last season. Kibo Hardy here at the top of the draft, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, behind him, there you got a lot of medium elites. Let's see here in terms of gems. We got number two overall, and that is it. Okay, so scouts didn't really do too much digging. In terms of, ooh, in terms of potentials though, uh, Chauvin there, they're thinking it could be high elite. I don't know if he actually will be. Um, I honestly haven't heard of him if he is like a real player. All right guys, now next year I'm gonna pick a trade the Vancouver Canucks for Luke Shen, reunite the two brothers. You can see he's actually 80 overall here at 34 years old. Triculin's X Factor there, defensive defenseman. So not too bad, he is making 1.8 million for the next three years, which is a bit more money than I'd like to pay for him. Um, I think if we get him, we'll probably trade away Logan Stanley. Um, honestly, he comes in as the six. I think Broberg probably makes the jump into the top six defenseman for our team next year. There he is. So uh, Timmons, we probably trade away for something. I'd rather really not trade Timmons here for Shen. So Shen had more value, surprisingly. Maybe Stanley in a sixth gets this deal done. And they reject that trade. That's crazy. I tried a fifth as well. They still said no. A fourth rounder in Stanley for Luke Shen. I think Stanley's the same rating. Yeah, he is. So I'm just doing this trade for you guys. He's also, what, five inches taller? And there we go, okay, so they finally said yes, and I think too, some people are asking for me to actually name Brain Shen the captain, which, I mean, last year he had a solid season for us, putting up 62 points in 82 games, so I feel like he's definitely earned the C, especially being 32, one of the veterans on this team for sure. And so I just sent our first pick of the draft, guys, which is in the second round, the Predators here got a steal, Fedorov, 18 years old, 76 overall, medium top four, are you kidding me, absolute steal, so... I'm gonna call a timeout here before we take a look at the first round. I wanna make sure I don't mess that up again. Canucks are gonna immediately goalie at four. Wow, okay, so, I mean, our pick is early second round. Again, there, 71, medium top six. Some really nice players. Kevin Harge, of course, went first overall. 77 there, highly potential. Next, though, Goddard there, 83, medium elite, I believe is made up. Ottawa centers there, get a beast of a player. Look at that shot on him. Uh, you got Magnus in there, Grossman. Sterner, Catton, okay, so 82 overall, medium elite, Olus there, the Kraken at 7, that's insane. So the top 8 there, all medium elite, right there you can see the Sharks pick from the Bedard trade, Dubay, 77 overall, 3 uh, superstar zone abilities there, another medium elite at 9 and 10, the entire top 10 of this draft is medium elite, which is pretty nuts, I can see a bunch of high top 6s there, then some high top 4s, Sharks got another medium elite with their own pick, Lashov, 79-18, Flyers got immediately there too at 19. Wow, this was an absolutely insane draft class. So I feel like a lot of these players um, obviously were part of the roster, was being created by EA, but there's also some EA created players in here as well, which is why the draft class was so good. And like I was saying, guys, in regards to what the Sharks got from the Dart trade, Dubay here, of course, they just drafted 77 medium elites. Then behind him, they got Allen. They took him with the 14th pick in last year's first round. Ellick here, they got the 17th pick, 71 high top four, which honestly isn't terrible either. And then Molnar here, they got the 30th pick, 71 medium top six, with a couple X factors though. Obviously though, if we add all those guys together, uh, Carmadard's value is still actually not as high as I expected to be honestly. I'd say their value is about three quarter to his. I thought it'd be like half at most. But anyway guys, we gotta make a pick here. I'm looking at Henry Muse, guaranteed medium top four defenseman. Could take a chance on the goalie who could be high elite, NHL ready goalie? Oh no, they think he's NHL ready. Tons of X factors, oh man, this is tough. Now looking at our defensive prospects here, and as you can see, we've only got two defensemen that are under 22 years old, so it probably makes more sense to take Muse. Um, I might trade back in the Buffalo picks on the block uh, to get that Vinny guy. So Muse here, 67 medium top four, that's not a bad player at all. 85 passing on an offensive defenseman, 87 puck control. He could actually turn out to be a pretty solid player. All right, guys, next year trying to trade for the Buffalo pick, offering up our third, sixth, and seventh in this year's draft, as well as a fifth next year, all to get that goalie. Buffalo says yes, that was a lot of draft capital, but if he's a high league goalie, it was worth it. Come on, Vinny. Okay, let's go. 72 overall, high league goalie, eighth pick in the second round. Look at those X factors as well. That is a steal. He should have been a first round talent. Now, the only bad thing here is we actually don't have any more picks. 
left in the draft. So basically what I'm gonna do, I think, is sim round by round. If there's somebody I see that I really think we need to go after, I'll make a trade. All right, guys, so next year I'm trying to trade the Maple Leafs to get their fifth round pick as well as two sevenths in exchange for Kachuk and Brown. I don't think I'm bringing either of these guys back. Brown's still a decent 81, but I already saw he wants like three million, which is just too much. And then Kachuk, 26, he's done growing to 79. Tons of players like him. If we get these late picks, who so I've already kind of, you know, eyed prospects for, I think it works out for us. Trades accepted, okay. So if we can land on at least, you know, a couple of those picks, I'll be very, very happy. First one here, 161. Uh, there's somebody I wanted around the 165 mark. Uh, there they are. Andrew's supposed to be a low top six. Very good chance. He is a low top six. Only 55 overall, but uh, still I'll take that. And our next pick here, guys, 199. First pick in the seventh round. Uh, this is the guy I actually want next here. Calio, probably medium top six. Are you kidding me? Three out of four chance to be medium top six. He's a medium bottom six. I feel like we kind of got screwed there, but that is all right. O'Flaherty actually plays for the Spitz. Roberts there, was he the goalie I was eyeing? Because there was actually a goalie I was eyeing. No, uh, Buke here. Could be medium starter. And he's a medium backup. Okay, so at least we hit on one of the three picks. And again, I wasn't planning on bringing back either of those guys we traded. So still pretty happy with this draft, especially Vinny there, the high league goalie. What a steal. Our now three sign phase of $25 million in cap space. So obviously, a lot of money to spend, especially when all of our best players are under contract. I can see Bedard there's up to an 89. Now, I will say, I saw some people saying I should trade Larkin because I always sign him. So if you guys want me to trade Larkin, let me know. I'll leave him on the team for now unless, you know, he can be used in some blockbuster deal. But our best player that needs to be signing here is Noah Hannafin. Wants just under five for four years. It's actually a steal of a contract. Uh, seven years would be the rest of this. 27 years old. Pay him till he's 34. Um, you know what? Let's try like a five year till he's 32. Let's try 4.75. I think that's pretty fair value for an 85. Actually, the later this gets into the franchise, the better of a deal that'll be. Burns unfortunately dropped to an 83, but we'll hopefully save money on him next season. Timmons will qualify for now. I think I already know he wants a lot of money. 2.2 is actually pretty fair. One year there, 2 million. We'll consider that, but obviously you don't need to rush with him being an RFA. Um, Paling, I think that's a great contract, especially gets up to an 80. Uh, three years there, it's still under mill. I'm more than happy to do like an iron 50k three year deal on him. Krasa, let's see what he wants. 1.3 on a two year. Um, if we do like a seven year on him, 1.8. 24 if he plays fourth line, I feel like he could start to grow. Let's try 1.75 for seven. Broberg, obviously I want to sign. I think he makes a jump to NHL next year. In which case, let's see if we can do one of those like long-term deals. Eight years, four million. That's not gonna work, but five years, 2.5, four years, 1.9. Okay, three years is the sweet spot for sure. If we can get him signed for like 1.1 for the next three years, I think that's an awesome deal for us. It's a tarred guy even, 25.79, high top six. I like a three-year deal on him a lot. Fedor Svechkov here, I'm probably gonna try another one of those long-term deals. Are you kidding me, eight years? If he crows at all, eight years a million bucks is nuts. And now looking at our goalies here, guys, we've actually got everyone under contract. So got to decide what to do with Vinny. Could sign him to be the AHL backup as a 72 overall, or just have him go play another year in Europe, which might be the move. I feel like he should grow more as a starter there rather than being a backup in the AHL. Otherwise, we pretty much have to trade away Herbal here. Uh, it's really tough to say, you know, what's going to be the best growth for him because I've seen both scenarios. Look at that, head coach is back, so that's good to see. I'd like to keep the same head coach the entire time if possible. Okay, Hannafin rejected our contract, didn't like how long I offered him the deal for. Broberg though accepted, same with Lorenz there. Svechkov, the eight-year deal. Krasov as well, the long-term. Atard there. Palin doesn't want a two-way, although I thought he did. Uh, coach A there, just accepting like an entry level. All right, so for Palin, since he wants a one-way, let's try like a million bucks for four years. And then Hannafin, I'm honestly pretty happy with the ask he's giving. So I'm doing 4.75 for four years now. And there we go, Hannafin says yes. Same with Ryan Palin. Okay, so I think everyone's already under contract except for Timmins. And we still got 20 million in cap space. So might as well sign Timmins. Uh, two years, let's try like 2.225. And he says yes. Okay, so there we go, everyone under contract. 19 million still in cap space, a great spot to be for sure. All right guys, so it's now for agency. We'll see who's available. Of course, we got some money to spend. Elias Lindholm, 91 overall, that's $12 million though. Yamamoto, William Nylander, okay. Tara Vinan I saw there as well. Brett Pesci up to an 89, about 7.8 million, which honestly isn't a crazy ask. He's a very good defensive defenseman. 92 D awareness and stick check, 93 shot block, 29 years old there. It's a bit of a risky deal, but I mean, he would immediately become our number one guy. I kind of like bringing the Nylander as well. The thing is, the $10 million ask. I mean, we could afford both of them. It's a thing though, like who's coming up next? 
Could our money be used on somebody else better next summer or the summer after that? Tyson Perry there wants 9.3. Bolvier is 85, only asking for 3.2 million. It's actually a really fair ask, I think. So I feel like we gotta make an offer on him just because it's such a good deal. Three years, we'll try, I don't know, 3.35. It's only a bit more money, but there are a lot of other players available. Then we gotta really decide, you know, which of these kind of big name free agents we're gonna go after. Taking a look at goalies here. Connor Hellbuck's available, 91 overall. You also got Flurry there, Samsonov. Again, we already have our goalies for next season. I'm just curious, is there a elite goalie available? There's not, but there is Allen Felt there. 2380. UFA, why does Tampa Bay not sign him? I don't understand. He could be a sick AHL starter for us. I feel like I gotta give him an offer just because if the computers don't, they're idiots. I really hope they do. Um, next, you're looking at two-way skaters. Anyone decent? Nolan Patrick, 25-78. I wouldn't mind giving him a chance here. Probably play in the AHL for us, but uh, two-year deal, see if he can do something. Robin Salo, 25-79, medium top 4D. We actually need at least one AHL defenseman this year. So I'll give him a contract as well. And now look at this, guys. I was looking at Tyler Benson here. He's 26 years old, 29 overall. Edmonton has had him scratched for the last two seasons straight. Like, he didn't play any hockey last season, which was 23-24, or the year before that, 22-23. So I'm going to give him a contract offer here just to save him, let him play some hockey. I'm not sure what the Oilers were doing, like who he offended in that organization. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely give him a contract offer. So... Next year, I guess we go for Nylander because same reign as Lindholm, but a little over a million dollars cheaper. Could also go for Pesci there to be a number one defenseman. I feel like Nylander as well, only 20 years old. Last year, I mean, that's insane. 95 points. Now, he was playing with Austin Matthews. Oh my gosh, 99 passing. His shot there is so good now. 95 offensive awareness. You can see defensive stats there are quite low. Good skater. Actually, pretty solid physical, surprisingly. He's looking like a beast here, so... I'm gonna give him a contract offer. We could do the same thing we gave to Larkin, 11 by seven. Um, how many other teams are interested right now? Zero, so we might honestly get him. And then Pesci, I want, I don't want it six years, although I still think he's 35, like he should actually be decent. Minnesota's interested as well. This is a tough one. I really have never seen Pesci this high rated, so I don't know if he's gonna stay that good. We try $8 million here on a six year deal, see what he says, obviously, when a lot of our rookies start needing new contracts, we're going to have to trade away some guys. But as I've said in the past, I'd much rather have cap problems because I've built such a good team opposed to playing it safe and, you know, having a pretty crap team. So I think this is the way to go. Let's see what everyone says here. Okay, Florida's immediately trying to get Luke Shen. Obviously, I'm not going to do that. Um, okay, there we go. NHL goalie coach. I got a new one of those as well as an assistant and associate. Okay, so far, so good. Two for two. Um, Islanders there want Trevor Moore. Second or third for more and a fourth. Not a terrible offer. If we're not in a playoff spot come this deadline, I'm definitely going to look to trade him. Uh, the associate coach, they rejected. All right, guys, so Sal here signed. He should improve the AHL defense, probably on the top pair. And Nolan Patrick signed as well. Hopefully, he can help with the AHL team too. Same with Tyler Benson. Allen Felt signed, okay. Okay, so yeah, definitely have like an embarrassment of riches in terms of our goaltending. Win here back from some of the two star players. Red Wings here, two seconds for more, third and a fourth. I'll consider that, especially if we do get Bollier. Waiting to hear back from him. Um, are you kidding me? This McGinnis guy went with the Utica Comets to be AHL head coach opposed to NHL associate? Oh, what the heck? No way. Pesci, they rejected my offer. I went with the Minnesota Wild. That's all right, though. Bolvier did accept. Okay. And so did William Nylander. All right. So, I mean, we got the top guy, in my opinion. That's awesome. All right, guys. So, I just hired a new associate coach. I want to give you a look at all the coaches I've hired this summer. Just kind of give you an idea of what I look for. I should mention, too, if you don't have owner mode on... Hiring coaches is so hard. Like right now, we're almost at the salary cap max with the head coach making only 2.7. If your head coach, say, gets good, asks for 5 million, you're pretty much screwed because that staffing salary never changes. So the associate coach I just hired, A plus teaching, which is awesome. Like that is so good for the young players. B coach influence. The other guy I was looking at actually had A minus in both. And I'm not going to lie, Sotheby had A when I hired him. So I'm not sure if that was inaccurate or if somehow it jumped up to A plus, but I'm not complaining. Uh, this guy here, you can see A minus for both. So that's what I'm always looking for. Teaching and coach influence is the most important stat. And then for the goalie coach, all that matters is teaching. So this guy there, A plus. In terms of our head coach, you can see he's got an A and a B, but the rest of his stats there are better. And I feel like the head coach is the only one that really matters for like offense, defense, power play, and penalty kill. And I'm just thinking to myself, guys, really didn't score much last year. So I'm wondering if we should bring in John Klingberg, really solid offensive defenseman. Three years to be till he's 34. I'm thinking more of like a two-year deal here. Five point, uh, I'll give him an extra 100K, 5.25. I think that definitely makes us a better team. At that point, too, we have some guys we trade away for picks or prospects. Wow, Minnesota's trying to get Bo Shen, brothers. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. What are they trying to pull? 
Uh, Columbus here wants more in Shen. Again, I don't think I'm trading more. I'm not positive on that. Thought for a second that was Ryan Eugene Hopkins, but it's not. And look at that, guys. Kleinberg did accept. Okay, so defense is definitely looking a lot better. Goaltending should be solid, especially if uh, Knight can grow a bit. And then offensively, I think, you know, we have a lot of young guys getting called up who hopefully can prove themselves. Now making a small trade here, guys, the Maple Leafs. Gus is in for a fifth round pick. Obviously, Gus is not a bad goalie, 26-81. Thing is, since we've signed Alan Fell, I can't believe this, he's already up to an 82. Now, if you guys saw my video on whether or not goalies matter, 75 overall Alan Fell was kind of a beast. So I think 82 overall Alan Fell will be even better. So I'm willing to kind of give him the reins as the backup, get a fifth round pick for free here, essentially. There we go. And after signing Klingberg, guys, we definitely have an extra defenseman, probably two. So I'm trying to get this again with prospect for the Minnesota Wild. He's honestly so sick. Only 17 years old still, so he must have a birthday in like August or September for that to be the case. Already 71 overall, which is insane for a 17-year-old. 88 passing, 90 puck control. His shot's pretty solid as well. Good skater. I feel like this guy could end up being a stud. So offering up Timmons there, if you don't really need, he's got some value still, along with a fourth round pick in, I think, two years from now's draft. So See what they say? Valley's on our side and Gillen's on the block for them. Trade's accepted. Okay, I think that's an awesome deal for us. And now next year, guys, are making a bit of an interesting signing. Luke Lendane's available. He's 77 overall, but he only wants 825k. He's got the quick draw zone ability there with 92 face-offs, so he should be winning, like, most of the draws. I'm thinking potentially it'll be a fourth-line center for us. Pretty good defensive stats there. Um, everything else is kind of average. I guess he's a decent skater, too. 87 speed and excel. So I'm looking at a fourth line. There might be a spot there. Worst case, he's just in the AHL. I'll give him like one near 800k. He should say yes, and again, just kind of giving us some options. I feel like the fourth line winning the faceoff a bunch of the time probably helps them out. Like, you know, they're getting the puck, hopefully getting out of our zone, whatever it is. And there we go. He said yes. All right, guys, so it's time to start our next season here. I'm trying to trade Noah Gregor to the Carolina Hurricanes for a third round pick. Uh, basically, he didn't make our NHL team, so I feel like he's too good for the AHL, especially signing for the next few years at $1 million isn't a bad contract. And if we can get a third round pick for him, I feel like it's definitely worth it. So we'll see what the Hurricanes say here. I think the value's on our side a bit. And yeah, trade's accepted. That's not bad at all. And now the next thing I want to do here quickly, guys, before I show you the lines, is actually change Conor Bedard's X Factors. I mentioned how I feel like he should really have a shooting one. So people were saying I should just go and edit them. Like, it's not a big deal. And so right here, guys, look at to do X Factors. I decided to make, make it snappy at zone ability because dude's just got an amazing shot. Everyone raves about it. And also I had a beauty backhand as I've seen so many highlights of him scoring backhand goals. And of course, kept elite edges, just change it from zone ability there to superstar. So I feel like that fits Bedard a bit better. All right, guys, so next year I'm going to show what the lines are looking like for this season. I really think we should be a playoff team. I mean, come on, look at that top six. Connor Bedard, Dylan Larkin, William Nylander, are you kidding me? Second line here, Joachim Kamel, Brain Shen, Tarasenko, of course. That is Captain Brain Shen now. Third line here even, Bolvier, Sorelli, Moore, I think is very solid. Fourth line, we've got Krasov, Glenn Denny, and Benson. Also getting a plus one there, which is a nice little added bonus. Defensively here, we got Gerard and Kleinberg on the top pair, getting a plus three. Gonchar, Hannafin, second pair, get a plus five. And then we have Burns and Luke Shen on the bottom pair. So, like, that defense is sick. Especially, too, I just realized every single one of them has an X factor. Goaltending wise, Spencer Knight's our starter, 87 overall. Allen fell back in ups now at 84. Like, that's pretty crazy, to be honest. And now, next year, guys, I'll show you the special team. So, that first power play went there, I mean, are you kidding me? Like, come on, who's stopping that? Uh, power play, too, even, I think, looks really, really good. Your team, Kamala, now in 83. Definitely putting him in a bigger role this year. Hopefully, he'll grow. Uh, Foreman power play one, still stacked, still plus five. Same with Foreman power play two. So plus five across the entire power play is just nuts. Uh, PK one here, you can see with Sorelli and Shen. Uh, number two there, Glenn Denny and Larkin. Number three here, Bedard Bolvier. And then in terms of three man PK, you can see we get plus five on the first unit. Second one there is Larkin. Third one, Shen. So like I was saying, guys, our team should be nasty this year. Two in regards to the captain C, just showing you. Brain Shen there in the C, decided to take the A off of Sorelli just because Gerard's been so good for us. Now Burns there was still running A. He's about to be 39, so. If he retires soon, maybe I give a letter back to Sorelli or maybe give it to Connor Bedard. And right now, guys, through seven games in the preseason, you can see we're currently 5-1-1. One, and one. and Neilan there is actually averaging a little over a point per game. So, like I was saying, high hopes for this team this season. Take a look at the ratings here. 96 offense, 92 defense, 88 goaltending. The Avalanche absolutely stacked. 96, 95, 94 for their top three players. So, we're not quite as good as the Avs yet, but still, I like our team. Let's see what happens. And throughout the Christmas break here, guys, record of 19, 15, and 4, which isn't too bad. I would like the team to be playing a little bit better. We are in a wild card spot, though, which is nice to see. AHL team crushing it, 27, 9, and 2. Uh, they got 56 points currently. Let's see the leading score is. Isaac Howard there, 46, 38. I was actually thinking he might make the NHL team this year, but 
uh, just didn't happen. I feel like next year he'll probably push for a spot. NHL-wise, Nylander there, almost a point per game. Love seeing that. So I'll keep going here towards the deadline. Hopefully can hold our playoff spot. Also, real quick, guys, if my voice sounds a little bit weird this episode, I don't know if I'm like sick or what. Definitely something in my throat, so I apologize. And so now, guys, we're at the trade deadline here. The record of 34-25-5. So we started playing some better hockey. Uh, we're currently third there in the division with 73 points. I think that's, you know, a pretty solid spot to be. Four-point lead there on the Blackhawks, the final wildcard spot. In the AHL, 42-15-5, 89 points, first in the division. They're sick. Howard there, 71. Uh, Nylander, over a point per game. Now, okay, so definitely buyers the deadline. I wouldn't say full-on buyers. I would say a conservative buyer because, you know, we're not, like, crushing it, President Stroke or anything like that. But looking like, you know, this should be our first time making the playoffs. O'Reilly there's available. Jacob Chikrin, Seth Jones, big contract, though. Same with Drew Doughty. Pareko, Sandheim, Lukanen, Provorov, Krug, Braden Shen. I don't know why our GM put him on the block. Definitely not trading him. Look at this, guys. Conor Bedard's already 91 overall now. How many points does he have on the air? 52. Not bad. I want to see Spencer Knight's stats because he really should be good. Wow. Vinny here, who we just drafted, playing over in Europe. Amazing numbers. Point nine one, two point six two. Already an 81. So I guess that was the right choice. Not having him be the AHL backup. Okay, that's good to know. So... Spencer Knight here, 0.908, 2.88. They're solid. Like, they're not amazing, but uh, they should be good enough. Also, too, guys, you can see there, we have 6.5 million in cap space. So we definitely can bring somebody in. I feel like it'd have to be, like, a really good player, though. But I feel like all they could really use, honestly, is, like, a top-pairing defenseman. I think our forwards are fine. I think we have good defensive depth, but obviously, you know, could use, like, a number one guy. All right, guys, so I mentioned wanting a number one defenseman, and Arizona has one on the block in Jacob Chikrin, 89 overall. You can see his X factors there, mediumly potential at 26 years old. So this is his last season to grow, 23 points, averaging 25 minutes a night. I mean, the dude is a sick defenseman. I'm offering up a first and a second this year. It's a Tampa Lightning second. Uh, this Rajanimi guy, okay prospect, nothing crazy. I'm hoping basically we make the playoffs. Like you're not making this trade and missing. We'll see what the Coyotes say. Trades rejected. Honestly, I thought it was a pretty fair offer. We could give up this high starter goalie, but. I'd rather not, obviously. James here is still only 69 overall at 21 years old. He has some value. I think he might be worth adding to this trade. we got to bring somebody back. Just literally worst uh, contract, whoever they want to give us. Liam Kirk, that is fine. Do they say yes now? Trade still rejected. Okay, let's just try. I didn't want to do it, but let's just try giving up the high starter goal. I think four chicken is worth it, especially since we still have Knight, who's only 23. we got this Vinny guy who's looking like he's going to be insane. So first round pick. High starter goalie, low top four defenseman. Come on. Wow, trade is rejected. Okay, so we'll add the other stuff back. Maybe they'll say yes now. All right, guys, I'm also adding Andrews here and James this trade. Low top six forward, medium top six forward. Come on. There we go. Okay, I also got Michelli back, who's actually carrying it up real life NHL. But I think that's it for the trade. I feel like, you know, that was a really good one. Uh, we didn't trade away Luke Shen, who will probably just be scratched now. Uh, for the playoff run, but you know, he's still there for moral support. All right, guys, the trade deadline's now over. We'll take a look here and see what happened. Logan Brown there, who of course we had last year, traded the Predators. Uh, Zach McEwen there, the Rangers, our trade for Chikrin. Let's see, Ryan Johnson there, Detroit. I wouldn't mind that. Uh, Jake Muslin there, Detroit as well. Okay. Trika there, Chicago. Jake McCabe to the Vegas Golden Knights. Tyler Boucher there, the Blues. Justin Falk to the Sens. Nick Jensen in the Leafs. Kalorn there, the Penguins. So, not too many trades. Definitely, I think we had the biggest adding Chikrin. Next year, guys, I want to give you a quick update on the lines after the trade for Chikrin. So, obviously, no change to the forward group. Defensively here, I've now got Gontrar and Chikrin on the top pair, which I think actually, you know, really boosts up the defense. Gerard and Klingberg is the second pair. Burns, Hannafin on the bottom. Uh, in terms of the power play, I've actually got Chikrin on the point there for power play one. He's also on four-man power play one. I think he's also on the first PK unit. So, like, rely on him heavily here. Hopefully, like, that trade again was worth the high price we paid. Obviously, we need to make the playoffs first, and then I would like to at least make it past round one if we do. And so, so at the end of the season here, guys, we have a record of 47, 28, and 7. So finally, this expansion team makes the playoffs, 101 points there. We're actually tied with the Stars, and even if they win, they'll still be in the second place spot. So we're playing Dallas here round one, AHL-wise, 52, 24, and 5. Somehow the Comets there actually caught up to us. They have 110, one point ahead. We do have one game left. Let's sim it here and see. We lost it, unfortunately. The comments there, 112. They win the AHL. Isaac Howard, though, popped off. 92 and 82. Love that. Nylander as well. Really solid season from him. 87 points there, 82 games. Take a look here and see how everyone else did. Uh, behind him, you got Lurkin there with 81. Bedard, 72. Not too bad now at 93. Oh, my God. Look at the shot on him there. Look at the hands. Everything's insane. 99 offense awareness. His shot block there is a little bit low, but who really cares? 
face off, he's playing wings, so that doesn't matter. Really good skater. Physical is definitely bad, but I'm not really looking for him to be physical. I just want him to score. So hopefully next year he pops off, puts up at least a point per game. Tarasenko didn't do too bad. Kamel, rookie year, 54. I'll take that. Gerard, 50. Sorelli there, almost 50. Morse, 41, isn't bad. Shen, 37. For a second liner, honestly, you'd hope for a little bit better, to be honest. Hannafin, 34, I think is pretty good. Shikrin, 31. Uh, let's take a look here and see how he did on our team. 18 games played, 8 points. Considering the ice time he was getting, honestly, he probably should have put up more than that. Uh, goal time wise, Knight here, point nine one four and 2.73. Those are very good numbers. Allen Feltz, not so much. AHL wise, Kolosov, point nine one two, two point three nine. I feel like he'll probably jump up to an 82 or something. So we definitely have a lot of good goalies to choose from. Uh, and, the, and then in terms of skaters, of course, Howard there, 92 points is crazy. Patrick, 78. I think he could actually get up to like a 79 maybe after this season. Panling, 67. Lysol, 66. We're still looking for Lysol to grow to the 80. Lamb here at 61. He was only a 77. This guy could actually start to grow a little bit too. Svechkov, 60. Like seeing that. Tyron here at 58 points. Isn't bad. This Bolshnikov guy. 25 goals there. He's got a pretty good wrist shot. So that's nice to see. Salary sign, 45. Broberg, 43. Hopefully at least stays in 82 because I think probably in him next in the NHL. And check this out, guys. I was curious if maybe Isaac Howard led the AHL in scoring, and he did. Three-point lead there on this Michael Hay guy. Sunny on overall, medium elite. 10th overall, 2024. So that is cool to see. Like I was saying before, I feel like Howard's definitely making the NHL next season. Now, speaking of the entire NHL, McDavid there. Again, our Ross Trophy winner, 107. Eichel a point behind him. Stone there as well, so that duo went off. Robertson, Matthews, Goudreau, Capriza, McKinnon, and Marner. In terms of goals, Matthews there. Another Mr. Shard Trophy for him with 56 goals. Looking at defense next, Tyson Berry on Carolina, 87 points. I mean, I'm still pretty happy with the trade. Like, we got back Spencer Knight, who's a young, elite starting goalie. Uh, Tyson Berry, though, with like 97 passing there, 96 offense awareness. I feel like his shot's gone up there, all 90s. That's crazy. 87 points. Maybe we should have held on to him. Oh, well. Fox, they're also 87. I don't think any of our defense would put up that many points, unfortunately. Kale McCarr here, only 58. That's actually really surprising, considering the dude's 95 overall. Now, goalies here. Jake Onge there, most wins. Save percentage for a starter. Kosa, if you count it, 0.927. If not, Vasilevsky. And then goals against here. Samsonov, actually, back on Washington. Kosa there as well. So, I don't really know what the game's going to decide. Could be Kosa. Rookie skaters here. Let's see. Sean Farrell on the Montreal Canadiens. Undrafted guy. A2 overall had 75 points. Jeez. Kamel here was actually quite low, but same amount of points as Matt V. Michkov. So really can't complain about that. And look at the entire league here, guys. Maple Leafs won the President's Trophy. We actually finished fifth. So like, yeah, this team finally kind of found their step there. Made the playoffs. St. Louis got screwed, missing at 13. Let's see here. Last in the NHL is the Arizona Coyotes. 64 points. That's why they traded away Jacob Chicken to us. Goals for there. Minnesota's first. We're not on that first page. Uh, we're not on the bottom page either, so we're in the middle somewhere. Best goals against Dallas Stars. We're actually ninth best team for goals against. Worst there, Buffalo Sabres. So, as I mentioned, guys, we have the Dallas Stars here round one. I saw Jason Robertson was, what, like fourth in scoring the entire NHL, so we'll definitely have to deal with him. But I'll show you guys the rest of their team here. So, they got Hanson Duclair on that first line playing with Robertson. Johnson on the second line, now an 83, playing with Sagan and Marchman. He's up to an 86. Ben, Bork, Brown, Kasha, Faxa, Blumel. Defensively, Heiskanen, Lungfist, who's up to an 85. Rochelle here, 84. Lindell, 85. Harley, Stillman in goal. They got a 90 on 84, Anuin backing up. How did Anuin get up to an 84? That's kind of nuts. So this looks like a good team. I feel like if we lose to them, I won't be too upset because this is a solid team. I feel like, though, we should have a chance. Like, same amount of points the regular season. Let's see what happens here, guys. First two games in Dallas. 4-1 win, 5-4 OT loss. I will take that. Second game being a close loss. 3-2 OT win, 4-1 win. One win away from second round. And there we go. In five, we beat the Dallas Stars. That's what I'm talking about. Round number two, we're playing the Chicago Blackhawks. Okay. So right here, guys, what Chicago looks like. I'm not going to lie. I feel like Dallas was a lot better. Marcus Domi, Michkov first line. Kane, Reichel, Perron in the second line. Like, it's just a lot of low 80s here. Recky here. Rod Recky. Pretty sick name. First overall pick, 2022. Wow. And that was, of course, the redo draft. Playing with Taser on the third line and Radish. Kivaranta, Jost, and Fogel on the fourth line. Defensively here, they got Nolan Allen, Seth Jones, Korchinski, Samurikov, Vlasic, and Chaika. So, I mean, they do have a lot of good young players. Hofer is their starter, quick backing them up. Thing is, I feel like they don't have that all-star talent. Like, I guess Patrick Kane, how do he do in the regular season? 86 points. Yes, I mean, the guy to watch on their team definitely is Patrick Kane, but... 
Um, just looking at their team on paper, I think, you know, they're going to be a good team in the future. But I honestly feel like we're better right now. So we'll see what happens here. We actually have the home ice advantage in this one. And after two games, you guys can see we lost one and won one. Headed to the Windy City now. Let's see. 3 0 win, 6 1 loss. Okay, so it's 2 2. Game 5 at home, 3 0 win. Have to win one of the next two games. And we win game 6 in Chicago in overtime. Let's go. Conference final now against McDavid and the Oilers. Okay. Current leading scorer here, Kamel, 10 and 11. That's awesome to see from the rookie. All right, guys, so the Oilers here. Hyman, McDavid, Yamamoto, first line. McDavid's now 97. Second line's play Yarvi, Dreisaitl, Kane. Dreisaitl's a 96. Paul Byron on the third line there. Nugent Hopkins, McLeod, Goloshev, Holloway, Balser. I feel like Holloway's kind of being wasted there on the fourth line. I'm curious too. Byron Speed, 93. Okay, that's fair. Defensively here, Nurse, Bouchard, top pair. CC, Kulak, Nimalainen, and Hackenpah. I mean, they're kind of weak defensively. Like their top pair D is actually worse than our second pair. Goaltending wise, Campbell there, the starter, Skinner back, you know, Moff. That's a pretty solid duo though. 85, 86. If one's not playing well, just run with the other. So this one, guys, we're gonna sim period by period. Let's see what happens. I, if we can beat McDavid and Dreisaitl, we're proving that we're legit. Up one here after one, Gonchar. Three to one, Bolvier, Larkin, Hallway for them. Five to one, Bedard and Sorelli. Let's go. Game number two now, guys. Let's see. Edmonton's up one. Goloshev. They're up two. Hyman. Three to one loss. Terrasan gets our lone goal. Nuge for them. Okay. Honestly, though, I'm more than happy to be one and one through the first two games in Edmonton. Head home now to Saskatchewan. Hallway there, up one. Jeez, Balsers, Goloshev, three nothing. Four nothing. Are you kidding me? All right, so game four now this is pivotal. Like, tie the series or go down three to one. Also, too, guys, as I said, Saskatchewan there, this made me think. Um, I, I read some of the comments, and it took me, like, a few days to catch up on all of them. And for some reason, all the ones mentioning now, Saskatoon was spelled wrong in the thumbnail at the very bottom. So it took me forever to scroll through. Thank you guys, though, for pointing that out. I don't know how I completely missed that one. But anyways, game four, pivotal. Down 2-1, Dreis on the line in, Gerard for us. 4-2 to two now, oh, no. 6-4, to four, okay, Bedard gets one, Larkin. Dreisaitl McDavid. So, backs are against the wall here. Edmonton has a 3-1 series lead. Still, though, they have to win one more game. You never know. Maybe the boys will just rally back here, win three straight. Always get an early lead for Mariner Kane. 2-1 now. Nurse for them. Chicken for us. 5-2. That's all she wrote. Honestly, though, for our first time being in the playoffs, making it all the way to Carmen's final, and losing to McDavid and Dreisaitl, I'll take that. As you guys can see here, the playoffs are now complete. The Edmonton Oilers won the Stanley Cups. So we lost to eventual champs. Cleveland Monsters there won the Calder Cup. I actually forgot to show the AHL team completely, so if you guys are curious, um, AHL team here in the playoffs actually lost to the Cleveland Monsters in the first round in five. So both teams lost the eventual champions, go figure. Uh, let's see, Nylander there, leading playoff score, 16 and 16. Curious to see how everyone else did. We'll take a look at that first, because they did make it three rounds. Bedard 14, Sorelli 13. Kamel cooled off, so I think he only had one point there in the series against the Oilers. Tarasenko, Shen, Larkin could have done better than eight points, I think. Uh, Chicker in there at six. It's not terrible, I guess. Take a look at goalies now. Spencer Knight there. But 915, 2.86. I mean, they're solid enough numbers. Definitely, you know, cannot put the playoff loss on him. Oilers here went through the Avs in six. Tough first round matchup. Ducks in seven. Us in five. And then the Bruins there in seven. Next year, guys, looking at the awards. So we know the team awards there. Individual McDavid, another at Ross Trophy. is fourth in five years. Stone there, though, got the heart. Fox, James Norris. Goudreau, Lady Bing. Ponomero up there got the Calder. Dreisel, Akon Smythe, Andre Vesna, along with William Jennings. It's back to back Vesna's for him. Shabbat, Will Masterton, Chicago coach Jack Adams, Lindholm Selkie signed with the Capitals. Stone Ted Lindsay, Matthews there, Maurice Richard. Now looking at the AHL awards here, I think we didn't win our division, even though we were like second in the AHL. So yeah, no team award, unfortunately. Isaac Howard, of course, most points, also won MVP. Sterner, though, most goals. This head guy, best rookie. Benning there, best defenseman. Halak, best goalie. McGrody there, MVP of the playoffs. Uh, Haig there, maybe it's Hage, sportsmanship. Homer's there, community involvement. And then Dansk, lowest goals again. So like I said, Isaac Howard, you know, expecting big things from him. Already a 79. Should be an 80, I think, by the time we start next season. Now, before I end this episode, guys, quickly want to see all the retired players. Also, to the draft players, also pretty important. As you can see, Columbus jumps from 12 to 2. So some crazy jumps in this. And Pittsburgh moves up slightly there from 2 to 1. Luckily, of course, the first round pick we traded was not a lottery pick. I'd have been so upset if it was. Now, like I was saying, looking at retired players here, Eric Stahl, number one retired player, okay. Carter there, Parise, Suter, Lucic. I don't see Brent Burns, so uh, probably going to bring him back because he is on the thumbnail, but luckily he'll be making a lot less money now with the new contract. In terms of the goalies, guys, look at this. Carey Price retired, 69 overall, obviously. He's kind of like already LTI retired. Craig Anderson, 
was our goalie the first year, so shout out to him, Halak, Bishop, Schneider there. Honestly, a lot of LTI retired goalies. So that's going to do it, guys, for this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully next year, maybe we can make another playoff run, even win the Stanley Cup. I think that'd be pretty cool. If you guys did enjoy this one, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit the sub button down below. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.